Hello, welcome to Power BI Cloud Series from DoSQLBI.com. In this series of Power BI on Cloud, we had an overview session, a session on natural query language and data management gateways. In the current session, Power BI and Big Data, we will see how Microsoft has enabled taking the benefits of Big Data analysis with Power BI integration with Big Data implementation of Microsoft in as HD Insight has enabled scenarios which were earlier otherwise time consuming and quite costly. And in the following session, we'll see Power BI integration with machine learning. In Power BI and Big Data, it's essentially enriching the business insights with the analysis done on the big data, which in, in the past has been a very time consuming and high cost activity. We'll see the business scenario that we will use for this presentation and demo and then go through the actual demo. The, the business scenario is where, where you may have a very large data set that you want to analyze in a faster and cost effective way. During this demo, we will be consuming a data set that has 100 million data points and we'll see that how cost wise and time wise it is so effective that we are provisioning the infrastructure at the time of analysis and deprovisioning that once the analysis is done. You know, essentially we may end up spending $10, $20 to get the job done and we don't incur any more costs. Our data would be made available in low cost Azure blob storage. And originally uh, that data was uh, moved from SQL Server to Azure blob using a scoop, which is one of the tool that comes with Hadoop ecosystem. And we will be, as I said, provisioning uh, the HD Insight cluster at the time of analysis and then deprovision that once the analysis is complete and consume the analysis results in Power BI data model. We will also overlay the results of analysis uh, using Power BI maps. In terms of infrastructure, uh, there would be some data source uh, which uh, we will be using when we have a very large data set. I mean, it could be even an application that is producing very large data volume and that data would be then stored in a low cost storage. In our case, in case of this demo, we'll be using Azure Blob and then a provisioning HD Insight cluster to run an analysis jobs over that large data volume. We'll be using something called as high external tables. In a simple way, what that means is we want to keep the data outside the HD Insight system so that when we deprovision, when we uh, remove the HD Insight, our data is intact. And then we'll be using Power BI feature of Hive queries to, to define the jobs which run as MapReduce jobs on HD Insight. So let's uh, switch to the demo. I'm logged into my Azure subscription and under HD Insight, I want to create an HD Insight cluster. So I choose Hadoop and I give it a name and I'm selecting I want a 32 node cluster because our data set is about 100 million data points and I want to run some queries so I want to you know have them executed uh, much faster. I'll define a password and then I define which storage account it should use. Um, it can I can have it use a new one or any of the existing ones. I will define one of the existing ones and then say create cluster. It will take a few minutes before the cluster is provisioned and uh, ready to use. But essentially, this is all what it takes to create a cluster. So our cluster is provisioned now. We can see the status as running. Um, we can just take a quick look at uh, the dashboard and there are uh, you know, other monitoring and configuration features that come with the cluster. Let's take a quick look at the data. So under storage, the data set that I would be using for analysis purpose is this data. So this is a collection of about 200 files and each single file in this contains about 500,000 records of data. I can just show you a quick view of that. This is 
one such file opened in an Excel, which is a CSV comma delimited file. And if I see how many rows each one contains, you can see the last one here is row number 500,000. So we'll come back to our Hadoop cluster and open a query console. So I have this query console open. I use the username admin and the password that I had uh, set at the time of creation of the cluster. Now what we could do is go to Hive Editor here. In the Hive Editor, I'll paste this query. So let's let's see what it is. So we're saying create external table. We give the table name as data, and then we define the column name and the data type for for that column. So there's first name as string, last name, phone, email, state name, submit date, urgent. You know whether whether that submission of the entry was flagged as urgent or not. Then there is comments which is string and there is a row number which is an integer and the format of the data is it is delimited fields by by comma and it's stored as um, as text file location this is that my my external storage path now if you if you see it I'm giving the name of my storage and then this is the standard URI blob.co.windows.net and starting with the container name which is my data now what this is going to do is this will create an external hive table uh, the table that is um, you know part of the hive system and hd inside uh, that we provisioned uh, but it's pointing to the storage which is living outside that system now let's run this query i am submitting this job so the job got submitted and it will take a moment to get this complete so this is done which essentially means I have now this external table submission job submitted and I should be in, in, in a moment see the results of that job now you see the status of job is showing as completed which means this external table has been created in HD insight so I have this Excel workbook open which already has two data sets in this one is the crime data that um, i have uh, collected from open uh, source uh, like wikipedia and uh, uh, azure marketplace and there is another data set esri data which is a demographic uh, data uh, set that is available again at uh, market data now what i'm going to do is i will go under data and create a new query this time I will choose a sample of Microsoft Hive DNS. Say OK. It shows up the ODBC, you know, connection dialog. And in this, I have Windows Azure HD Insight, the username admin, and I am going to enter the password that I set at the time of creation of the cluster. Now, once that is done, I also have to give the our uh, HD Insight server name, which was my HD dot azure hd inside.net this is done i can do a quick test of the connection so the connection is successful now what i could do is it establishes the connection and we can define our hive query which will be posted as a posted as a hive query to uh, hd inside that it will eventually you know create an uh, map reduce job for that query so this is the table that we have created and it should sh this is that external table the other one is the sample one that comes with the uh, HD insight and I could see all the columns that were defined as part of that external table let's say you know I just uh, want to move just one column basically we are more interested in writing our own query so I'll move through this quickly till it gives me the option to so we'll go to view data or edit query so we want to go to the SQL and change this query to the one that we have where we say you know select state name and count from data group by state name and then if you see how adds these uh, fully qualified name so let we also do that we'll just run the query that we want to run what we are doing in this query is we are taking the 
count by state name so we have about 100 million submissions where each submission is from a person belonging to a different belonging to a different state so what we want to know is the count by state across that 100 million submissions so we gave this query and we are saying okay what this is going to do is it will submit this query to hd insight and HD Insight is going to convert it into a MapReduce job which will be executed on that cluster of uh, 30 node machines and the results of that analysis would be brought back to, to the Excel workbook. So we see the results of our query now got returned back to our, um, to our uh, query window. We have this option here, return data to Microsoft Excel. So we say return data to Microsoft Excel it gives us you know where we say to the table existing worksheet any properties that we may want to define one is that we want to give it a connection name so this was count by state name we say okay and we say okay so we'll have to supply the um, password again say okay so we got the results back that query was run again is that entire data set and now we have the count of submissions by state let's see the table name it has given we can change the table name to count by state name can also change the worksheet the sheet name also to count by state name in a similar way we want to run one more query that we'll see eventually you know um, in our data model and and the you know power view report so that query will go again go to the go to the data and then create one more query using this sample essentially follow the same steps that we followed in the first query now in this query what we want is the count by 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 month and a year and whether it was urgent or not and a state name so again we are going to post this to HD Insight as a Hive query, which will create a MapReduce job and run on that uh, 30 node, 32 node cluster over a data size of 100 million records. Now that we got the results back, which is the count uh, of submissions by month and a year, whether it were you know uh, further split by urgent and non-urgent by state. So we'll take like previous uh, return data to Microsoft Excel and we'll say new worksheet and uh, in the properties we'll name this as count by say others say okay say okay password now we got the result of that uh, query back to Excel let's give this table name as count by others also change the sheet name to that and what we will also do is we will go to power pivot and add both of these uh, result sets to our data model so count by others is added we will also add that other one count by state name now these are added as linked tables from the from the excel uh, table at this point in time we can go and delete that hd inside uh, cluster that we provisioned because all we want to do get is the results of that those two queries which had to run over that hundred million uh, data records and bring back the results that we wanted any work that we do here on would be done within this excel power pivot data model and whatever reports we want to show with that and going forward if there is any new data that we will populate to our blob storage and we want to refresh our analysis results with that all that we need to do is go to refresh all and refresh all the tables that we have here or we could specifically go to any particular connection and refresh the data of that that particular connection so so that way we could just provision the cluster before we want to refresh uh, data analysis results and deprovision that once the analysis is complete what i have is in order to save time i have another excel workbook where i have already created some reports out of this data model and um, if you are interested to see more details how to create and refine the data models you can go to one of my previous presentations in on power pivot 
you know uh, data models and uh, dashboards where i take a step by step walkthrough on creating and refining power pivot data models so what i'm first doing is going to my azure subscription and uh, deleting the cluster that i had created for running those uh, analysis and now that we are done with that so I can safely go and delete this. The, the beauty is that my data is lying outside the cluster. So that is not, uh, um, you know, that's not uh, removed and uh, it, is, it is protected. Only the cluster that I had created is, uh, is deleted. Now this is the other copy of that Excel workbook which had that crime data and ESR, ASRI data that you saw a little time before. And the results of those two hive queries, one is the submission count by state name and submission count by month and a year and then further dividing it by urgent and not urgent and the state name. I quickly wanted to show you the power pivot diagram view of this data. So there is ESRI data and crime data that was already there. And these two data results, submissions by state and submissions by month year and the state, the relationship between these tables in, in this is um, based on the state name. Again, with the crime data is based on the state and with the other results set also based on the state name. This is how this data is, a data model is set up. And based on this data model, we have created this power view report. Now, what this power wave report tells me is that what is the total count, which is 100 million submissions. And it shows me what is the trend across months of, of these submissions, you know, which months it has been low and which it has been more. And then I'm also showing the crime and, and demographic data. Uh, so, um, on, you know, on an average per capita income, uh, the higher education, the unemployment, and on the crime, you know, the, the total population, the crime incidents, and the crime ratio. Uh, what I could do is I could just, you know, uh, select a particular state, say in this case, uh, California, and then see what is the crime ratio in that state. These are the figures com coming from the crime data. And this is something that's coming from the demographic data. And plus the two result sets that we got as an analysis from our um, big data analysis that we that we ran and we got the results. So I could see those uh, trends out here. I can select any particular states. I mean, California with a large number of event submissions. But then if you compare it with other states, say uh, Texas, which where the crime rate is uh, more than California, you know, uh, there are endless number of possibilities how one can, depending upon the specific, you know, the, the business, you could pull in the relevant data, you know, that is publicly available, your corporate data. And even, you know, in the earlier cases, it would not have been so easy to run a relevant analysis on the big data that is relevant to a given, given business and then consume it so easily with your rest of the business. Business, uh, business reports and the beauty is that we just provisioned all that infrastructure at the time of need and once the analysis was complete we deprovisioned that I mean we might have ended up spending some five to ten dollars in the real case scenarios it can be 50 100 whatever uh, dollars depending upon how long we want to run those clusters and then with such a at time of need investment uh, getting the results and closing that infrastructure to say um, i've also created one small view of this data uh, using power map let's quickly have a look at that so this is just overlaying that data overlaying that data on on, on map so i've just the submissions and then i have per capita income and then this third one where we have combined a uh, few things. One is uh, what is the population? What is the count of submissions and the crime rate in that state? Say if I go to California population showing me uh, how, how big is the population and how many submissions have been from that state and what is the what is the you know total number of crimes that have taken place uh, during that time so we can overlay this and get a quick uh, sense of uh, these numbers by portraying them over a map let's come back to our presentation so what we saw is power bi integration with big data how we can run analysis uh, on our big data and consume the results of that analysis with our uh, power bi data models and 
build further rich insights into our uh, data. In the final and concluding session on this Power BI on cloud, we will see Power BI integration with machine learning. I'm Nasser Ali Mirza at dosqlbi.com. Thank you.